Hello everyone, welcome back to the online sessions of the Material Science and Metallurgy. Myself Vivek Parikh, taking the lectures now on the Powder Metallurgy chapter. So, we have already discussed about what do you mean by the Powder Metallurgy, which are the steps of the Powder Metallurgy and in that step we have discussed the first two steps that is the Powder Production Methods and then we have gone for the second step that is known as a particular step that is the powder conditioning step which comes that is the mixing and blending of the material we have done that means the powder has been prepared and now it is ready for getting into the shape so what we are want we want a proper shape of the material so for that we will be going for our third powder metallurgical step that is known as an powder compaction method okay so let us start about the thing that is known as an powder compaction method now Blended parts, they are then pressed in dyes under a high pressure to pressurize and bond the particles to form cohesion among the powder particles to impart the required shape. So, the blended particles, what we are doing, we are applying the pressure on it and as a result, we will be allowing it to get the final shape of the material. To work the part after compaction, whatever the after compaction we are getting, that is known as a green compact whatever the thing take a sand take a clay okay sand after adding water what will happen clay after that clay you take or you give that particular thing that is a ball shape whatever that ball shape you are getting that is known as a green material or you can say the green simply green green compact clear so the compaction exercise why we are going for the compact what effect we will be getting that means it will first thing that is reduce the void whatever the gap which are there between the two different particles that is getting reduced second one it improves the green strength of the particles third one due to that thing what will happen plastic deformation of the material will be there and as a result the final product shape we will be getting and the last one that the contact area is less why because we are taking that material into the centering purpose for that contact area is minimum with the help of this compaction now let us see how does the thing happen how the steps are there these are the different steps you can see over here the very first step powder must fill dye orifice completely fill all the powder still the orifice whole orifice is filled with the help of the powder second one a constant volume or the constant weight may be used that means during the all the processes the whole load or the volume the constant volume should be taken otherwise there will be a change in the dimensions will be there use vibratory filling what will happen due to that vibratory the powder particle will get settled down perfectly if you are not applying vibratory then there are chances of voids are there between the two particles apply pressure along more than one axis to minimize the defect you can go for the one direction two direction any of the direction you can go for the compression so what will happen the material will try to compress and as a result the shape of the material will be there after that compression eject the material take away the material and repeat the whole cycle once again you can see over here fill the material press the material remove the punch and after that eject the material and then once again we will be coming back to our first step and in this way we can say that these are the different types of the steps of the powder compression the basic steps of the powder compression there are many methods of the powder compression there are seven techniques out of that the first one die compression which we have discussed second one roll compression powder extrusion high energy compression isostatic explosive and the last one vibratory compression let us discuss these all the different types of the compression in the detailed one so the starting with the very first one that is known as a die compression method whatever the thing we have discussed earlier during the step the same thing is applied over here you can see the figure the same thing this is nothing but the two die two dies are taken between that powder is allowed to press and that is known as a die compression method metal is allowed to compress between the dies and then brought into the shape forces can be applied from one side or you can go for the both the sides it is up to us how we are going to apply the pressure on the material it will depend on the material which material we are taking according to that we will be going for the die compression method 
clear so that was the very first method the simple method dye compression between the dye take the powder press it and due to that pressing what will happen we will get the final shape of the material after that second method roll compression method you can see over here between the two rolls the powder is allowed to place and the powder is moved due to that thing you can see over here the thing that is the compressed part we are getting where we can use this thing roll compression method maximum we can use for the manufacturing of the flat sheets the whatever the flat sheets a long very long flat sheets can be obtained with the help of this method metal is allowed to compress between the rollers and powder is fed to the roll gap the thickness of the sheet is dependent on this roller gap roll gap whatever the gap is there between the roll it will totally depend on that thing and the continuous strip continuous long strips can also be manufactured with the help of this roll compression method third method that is the vibratory compression method it uses the low pressure and continuous vibratory motion to compress the same as the die die compression but what is the change that is the vibration is allowed during the filling so due to that thing a proper voids are less and the density is more so strength of the material can be increased with the help of this vibratory compression method okay so now going for the fourth method that is powder extrusion what do you mean by the term extrusion you can see from the figure that if the material is allowed to press from the back what will happen the material is allowed to move from this thing out during the movement of this thing out what will happen the material will come out and this is the thing cylindrical pipes and all that thing cylindrical part can be easily a long lasting part can be easily obtained with the help of this method extrusion method if you want to understand the simple method whenever you are using the paste you are applying the pressure at the back what will happen from the top from the outlet paste comes out the same applies over here the metal is filled in the container metal we are applying the pressure what will happen from the out outlet the material will come out in the form of that shape of that outlet okay metal is allowed to compress between the rollers and due to that thing powder extrusion method takes place okay now comes the next method that is known as an high energy compression high energy compression that is nothing but the method in which we are going for the hydraulic press the method pressure is applied with a high speed using the compressed gases due to that compressed gases what will happen as a result of which the compressed gas will be helping for that particular thing that means a very high compressed gas will make the metal powder come close to each other and as a result you will get the powder compression and the last method which is there that is known as an isostatic compression method in that isostatic compression method you can see the liquid is filled all around the thing and a proper same amount of energy or the load is applied on this material here the powder is filled and as a result what will happen this liquid by applying the pressure what will happen this liquid will transfer the pressure on this material and as a result what will happen the proper compression of the material will take place in this matter pressure is applied uniformly in all the direction through the hydraulic and the pneumatic medium and as a result a proper type of the perfect compression has been done with the help of this isostatic thing there are certain material which cannot be compressed with the help of all these things so for that thing there is an explosive methods which we can use so here you can see there is a two thing two dies are there so in that two dies what are there here you can see the upper die lower die and here the powder of the material to be pressed is taken above that thing you can see there is an explosive which is made and that is ignited what will happen due to that here the explosion takes place due to the explosion large amount of energy is produced and with the help of a very high speed this thing comes down and in a one shot this will get compressed this method is such a method that if you start the method you cannot stop that method so metal powder is kept in a die and explosives are kept on a upper die after ignition of the explosion what will happen large amount of energy in a quick time is produced and the, all that energy is transferred to the material and with that all the force the material is getting pressed and due to that what will happen the powder compression takes place 
which are the explosions which we can use the explosions like rdx dynamite etc which we can use as an explosive so that it will transfer its energy on the material and the powder compression takes place clear so here it ends your third powder production method sorry powder metallurgical method step that is known as an powder compression so we have generated powder after powder producing what we done we have gone for the mixing after mixing we have taken it with the help of the compaction it shape so now going for the fourth step which is the most important step of the powder metallurgy because properties are dependent on it that is known as an sintering of the material that particular thing is known as an sintering now what do you mean by the sintering it is the thermal consolidation process of loose or the compacted powder in an atmosphere controlled furnace below the melting point we are hitting the material in a controlled atmosphere clear hitting the material in a controlled atmosphere but what will be the temperature it should be always less than the melting point of the material if you go for the higher melting point what will happen due to that thing your material will get melted and as a result of which once again you have to start from the beginning clear so you should take it in mind that the material is not allowed to melt so it should be always less than the melting point of the material two types of the sintering are there they are the solid state sintering and the second one they are the liquid state sintering let us see first how the steps of sintering occurs the different types of the thing let us discuss it the first one that is addition without shrinkage you can see the particles will act individually 1 2 3 4 all the particles they are by the compression they are in touch with each other whenever the temperature increases densification and grain growth take place that means neck growth changes so over here you can see there is a diffusion which is taking place see the different layers they are getting closer to each other and contact surface here there is only this small amount of contact surface is there here the contact surface has increased and last one elimination of the last isolated pores that means pore rounding means over here you can see the gap and now as a result slowly and steadily the gap gets reduced the void get reduced so here four particles will now behave as only single particle and as i told you after sintering the strength of the material is increased why because this four particle strength is less if you apply load they will get disintegrated but here it will not get disintegrated easily large amount of force is required for the breaking of this particle and this is why sintering is very useful and as a result of which we are saying that powder metallurgy they are having a high life and they are having a maximum strength by which we are getting the maximum strength by this method only let us discuss the two types of the sintering that is the solid state sintering in that solid state sintering what is happening for that sintering you are saying that the solid state sintering involves heating of the powder below melting point to allow solid state diffusion particles bonding initiate at the contact point and they grow in the next and the particles will get around the boundary so here is the thing you can see solid state sintering whatever we discussed earlier in the steps the same thing happens over here you can see the different particles and now you can see over here the different particle that means your material in a solid state if it is heated and if they are getting close to each other due to that thing what will happen whatever the closeness is there in the solid state that is known as a solid state sintering but there is a change in the liquid state sintering what happens in the liquid state we are taking the liquid material because in a solid state sometimes the voids which are there there are remaining inside the material so for removing that thing what we are taking we are taking the liquid particle when you will heat at that particular this this liquid you can see over here it will spread out in all the direction and as a result of which what we will get the material will get close to each other so with the help of the liquid we are getting closer of the particles with the each other so that is known as a liquid state sintering liquid phase sintering usually involve mixing of iron powder with a liquid forming powder liquid forming they are the boride carbide firstly they are solid here you can see but as a small amount of heat is applied they convert into liquid so heating to a temperature where liquid forms spread and contributes to particle bonding and densification so 
as i told you the liquid will get the particles closer to each other and they will bond with each other and as a result the material will get very close to each other here you can see there is no thing which is left here there is a thing which is left over here the small gaps are there small gaps but in this thing you can see there is no gap which is there so strength of the material will be increased with the help of this sintering matter <coughs> clear so this was the solid state sintering and the liquid state sintering so now let us go for the sintering variables on which the sintering depends the very first one temperature as i told you if the temperature is very much higher liquid we will be getting and that is of no use if you are going for the low temperature sintering what will happen due to the low temperature proper bonding will not take place so optimum temperature should be taken the same way time if you go for the more time burning sensation will there if you go for the lesser time proper bonding will not take place so optimum sintering time is also used for the sintering process and the third one as i told you the atmosphere which atmosphere we are using the sintering depends on it so which are the different atmosphere we can use nitrogen we can use hydrogen ammonia ammonia why because hydrogen and nitrogen is only there in the ammonia vacuum is there endothermic gases and exothermic what are the endothermic gases endothermic gases are the gases which absorb the heat exothermic gases are the gases which gives the heat so these are the six of the different types of the atmosphere which we can take we cannot do it in our normal atmosphere clear then which are the zones of the sintering there are three zones of the sintering the first one preheating second one burn off third one cooling what is this preheating zone preheating zone is the zone in which only small amount of heat is applied so that the material gets acquainted with that thing if suddenly a large amount of heat is provided there are chances of cracks to follow inside the material so for that thing what will be happen to avoid crack what we are doing we are going for the preheating preheating or you can say pre sintering so that the material gets heat they get familiar with the heat and there is no change in the property due to that thing after that we are going for the hot zone so you can see the temperature is increased and at last in the furnace only it is allowed to cool to the room temperature you can not go for the rapid cooling why because for the rapid cooling the material will be brittle so inside the furnace only it is allowed to get cool so this is how the thing looks like here you can see the from the entrance load is applied preheating high heating and then in the furnace only cooling can be done so in this way these are the zones three zones pre sintering sintering cooling or you can say preheating burn off and the cooling zone clear in this cool hot zone or you can say the burn off zone whatever the lubricants and binders we have used all that things will burn away and goes out that's why it is known as a burn off zone clear they will goes away from the material and as a result why because their work has been completed so now they are of no use so we are removing it with the help of this burn off zones and all clear so this was the sintering and now we will be moving forward for the remaining two steps and then we will discuss the advantages disadvantages in our next lecture what we discussed in this lecture we have discussed the two main steps that is powder compression and the sintering step in this lecture clear so now we will be proceeding further in our next lecture till then thank you